click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we'll be discussing an illustration which is related to the cost of inventory now. So let's figure out what exactly do we have in this illustration for you. Now this will be the last problem that will be related to the weighted average method or LIFO FIFO method, any of it may be. Now we'll be practicing the last problem which is related to the weighted average method. So let's figure out with the illustration that we're going to mention down here for your reference. Now the question states related to the manufacturer who has given certain details about his purchases of items and issue of items for consumptions. So let's start with the same thing. Now the sections have been divided into two or rather the page has been divided into two sections. One is purchases and the other one is issues. So purchases has three columns basically that is date, quantity and rate. On what date, how much quantity was purchased and what was the rate of it. And the issue column has or rather the issue section has only two columns that means the date and how much quantity was issued. So we have mentioned the dates and the quantity of purchases. So the quantity of purchase or rather the purchase section has been completely fulfilled. The dates are as follows that is December 4. We had 900 quantity at the rate of 50 per issue or rather 50 per quantity 50 per unit rather we can talk about. On December 10 we have 400 quantity purchase at the rate of 55 per unit. December 11 it is 300 units at the rate of 55 again. December 19 we have 200 units and the rate here mentioned is 60 per unit. December 28 we have 800 units at the rate of 47 per unit. Now let's mention the issue date. So the issue dates have been also mentioned that means on December 5 500 quantity was issued. December 20, 600 quantities were issued and December 29, we have figured out that another 500 quantities were issued there. So now we have to figure out the value of the closing stock using the weighted average method and the LIFO method as well. So let's start with the weighted average method first. So we'll prepare the format for weighted average first of all. So let's prepare the format here. The linings have been done will mention the details here. That means again purchases and issues and the balances. So now that the dates and purchases or rather the sections have been separated here. Purchase has been kept aside and the issues have been kept aside. We have to go in a chronological order. So we'll start from the first day of December. So the first date is December 4. December 4 we had a purchase done. Amounting to 900 quantity and the rate per quantity is 50 units or other 50 rupees. So that will give you a value of 45,000. There was no other transaction on December 4. Hence we'll mention this in the balance itself. Now again on December 5 we have issue that was done for 500 units so we'll mention that now. Again here the standard rate will be itself as 50 because there is no other rate to compare. So 500 units have been issued at the rate of 50 per unit that gives you 25,000 as the value. Now you can able or now you will be able to figure out the effective rate. How is that the total amount that we have rather the quantity of amount that we have in the balance out of that will subtract the issued amount and the issued quantity. 
So the balance quantity that we have is 400 units and the balance amount that we have is 20,000. So 20,000 divided by 400 will give you the effective rate here. That still comes to 50. Now we have another purchase that is supposed to be done. So let's record that transaction. So the next purchase reserves to or rather the next purchase relates to December 10. 400 units were purchased at the rate of 55 per unit. That gives you a value of 22,000. So now this will be added to the balance here. So the earlier balance that we had is of 400 units. Now another 400 has been purchased. That means the total balance will be 800 units here. The earlier amount that we had was 20,000. Now we have a value of 22,000. So the total value amount here will be 42,000. So if 42,000 is divided by 800, you will get the normal amount or the effective rate here. So that is 52.5 that we have figured out. Let's go on to the next date. So after 10th, we have another transaction related to December 11. Again, that's a purchase. So that comes to 300 units, 55 per unit rate. Amount given here is 16,500. Let's add this to the balance now. So the total amount comes to 42,000 the earlier balance plus 16,500 that gives you 58,500 and the earlier balance of quantity was 800 units you purchased another 300 that gives you 1100 as units balance. So you will get the effective rate here now. So that comes to 53.18. Now let's figure out what is the next day transaction that we have. Again, the next transaction that we have is on December of 19 or 19 December, which is again a purchase transaction. So we have 12,000 rupees as the amount because 200 units were purchased at the rate of 60 per unit. Now this will be again added to the balance. So the earlier balance that we have 1100 units add 200 to it that will give you 1300 units here. And the previous balance that is 58,500. If you add 12,000 to it, you will get somewhere around 70,500 as the amount balance. Now that will give you the balance or rather the effective rate, which is 54.23. Now the reason why this effective rate is calculated is so that we can make sure that whenever an issue is happening or rather goods are going out, it is mentioned at that rate and not at any other rate or not at purchase rate here. Now the next transaction will refer to the issue itself. December 20th, we had issued certain items that amounted to 600 quantity. Now the rate here will be 54.23 because that's the last effective rate. So that gives you a total of 32,538. Now while mentioning the balance, as there has been an issue, you will subtract that much of quantity and that much of amount from the previous balance. So the amount balance is 37,962 and the quantity balance is 700 units. Now you will find the effective rate here. So the effective rate again is 54.23. Let's go on to the next transaction. The next transaction refers to December 28, which is again a purchase. So let's record that here. Quantity purchase was 800 units. The rate was 47 per unit. So the amount here will be 37,600. Now this will be added to the previous balance. So the quantity balance that we have got here is 1,500 and the amount balance is 75,562. You'll get the effective rate very easily. So with this, we have recorded all the purchase. Now the last transaction refers to the issue that happened on December 29. The effective rate will be the previous balance that is 50.37. So the amount here will be 25,185. Now this will help you in figuring out the total closing balance here. So whatever answer we get right now will be the closing balance basically. So the value of closing stock is 1000 units. 
and 1000 its value refers to 50,377 that means the total amount of 50,377 has been the value of the closing stock which amounts to or rather the quantity of closing stock is 1000 units so this is as per the weighted average method let's figure out what is the value that comes of the closing stock as per the LIFO method again we'll prepare the same kind of pattern in the next sheet now that we are familiar with the dates and everything, we will just start mentioning it, we will only explain things which are related to the balance here. So the first thing will be purchase. So the first purchase that was done was for 900 units, 50 per unit multiplied by it will give an amount of 45,000 that has been mentioned in the balance. Let's go on to the next transaction that refers to the issue here. Now here when it comes to effective rate, you don't have to calculate effective rate at all. Whatever stock came in last out of that, the first stock will be taken off. So the last stock that came in was only 900 units out of which we have to issue 500 units at the same rate that is 50. So out of that 900 balance, if 500 is taken off, 400 units are still left with us. So the balance that is left is 20,000. Now let's go on to the next transaction. So December 10, there was another purchase done. Now while mentioning the balance, you don't have to club the amount or you have, don't have to club the total quantity as well. You just have to mention the balance as it is. Now again on December 11 we had purchase and December 19th also we had purchase so we'll mention the balance accordingly. So we have mentioned the balance for December 11 transaction. Let's mention it for December 19th now. Again the previous balance will be taken down and this will be added there. Now after December 19th we have certain issue done so we'll make that transaction now December 20th. Now this issue related to 600 items. So when we're talking about 600 items, we need to figure out what was the last stock that came in. So in the previous balance, I'm highlighting the number that is from bottom to top because last in first out is the concept. So as I've highlighted one, two, three, within that stock itself, this purchase or this issue can be justified. So 200 items went off first. So total right now out of 1 and 2 we have completed 500 items that means only 100 items are pending. So the third lot that we have are 400 units out of that we can take only 100 units here. So that constitutes the total sale. Now we'll mention the balance. Now we shall go ahead and move further with the second last transaction that is a purchase mentioned on December 28. So we had 800 units purchased at the rate of 47 per unit. Total amounting to 37,600 that will be mentioned in the balance along with the mentioned one earlier in the red. Now the last transaction refers to December 29th that is the issue transaction. So in total 500 units were issued the bifurcation will be shown as follows. So the last stock itself is equivalent enough because 800 was the last amount of stock that came in so that was equivalent enough to sell out or rather give the complete issue. So that amounts to 23,500. Now the balance will be mentioned there. So the balance rather the closing stock has been mentioned here which amounts to the total as mentioned in the last column. So what we have mentioned in the last part is the cost comparison that means the value of closing stock as per weighted average method comes to 50,377 and as per the LIFO method it comes to 50,600. So this is the basic difference that we can figure out whenever it comes to preparation of such methods using the weighted average method or the LIFO method or the FIFO method or rather than showing this comparative sheet. 
So this is what you need to understand when it comes to preparation of such details ideally when it comes to preparation of cost inventory. So I hope this video gave you a clarity about how to go ahead with the weighted average method and the LIFO method especially when issue and purchases are separated for you. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and keep subscribing to Ikeda.